Hello and welcome to Wake and Jake, myself and Davis Wimbledon. Uh, on the eve of the MLB season, it's here. We did it again. Uh, you know, some of those January days, you start wondering how far away baseball is. Thank you, World Baseball Classic. Uh, an incredible, incredible segue uh, to get us to the MLB season. Uh, a lot of you probably know we'll be streaming all day tomorrow. Make sure you join us. Um, we're going to be watching all the games. Yankees play at one, Mets play at two. And we got a lot of representatives of those teams, but we got seven screens set up in the lounge. So we'll we be streaming, Mon. Uh, shout out. Uh, so I figure we do some, you know, Eva the MLB season. If you're looking to catch up, what you need to know, we'll do that quick, and then we'll do a little Q and A at the end of the episode. Uh, we got people live in the chat, uh, some player stuff, some team stuff. Uh, who will win the World Series? No. Um, I guess I want to go go back through the off. Like, okay, we like being a cron pod, right? Who are the free agents this off season? Aaron Judge back to the Yankees. Thank God that only had Yankee fans questioning the whole organization's merit. Is that the right word? If the Yankees didn't sign Aaron Judge, they weren't the Yankees anymore. They did that. Uh, they also signed Carlos Rodon to the seventh biggest free agent contract. Trey Turner in Philly. That's exciting. But, man, have they gotten hurt recently? Yeah. Harper's going to be out for a chunk. And yeah. Reese oh, Hoskins. They're, they're not ruling out an earlier return than what Harper had said however many weeks ago, but still going to be out at least a month. Bogarts with the massive contract that kind of surprised people. San Diego and their storyline this year is going to be a lot of fun. The Carlos Correa saga. My goodness. Remember that? That was this offseason. Giants. Mm. Mets. Lands back with the Twins. Fourth biggest contract. Jacob deGrom actually went to Texas. And the Texas Rangers the last two years, they've signed deGrom, Avaldi, Heen Dog, John Gray. They re-signed Martin Perez, who was really good last year. After Seeger and Simeon. Like almost the Texas hype train left the station too early. And <laughs> they've got to deal with maybe the two best teams in the American League in their division. Um, so that's kind of tough for them. Our Cubs rejoined the party with the Dansby Swanson signing. He was the last big shortstop to drop. Um, and let's not forget, I think the other team that was kind of the team of the offseason, the New York Mets. You know, a lot of pieces out, a lot of pieces in. I mentioned DeGrom, but uh, Nimo Diaz resigned. We wondered if they'd do that. They take a flyer on Sanga, which if he's anything like how he kind of looks, 5 for 75 is a massive steal. Let's see what it actually looks like. Um. And then, yeah, I, I think from there, so those were kind of your teams of the the off offseason. Uh, Toronto, they signed Bassett, and they did the Dalton Varsho trade. Uh, they also traded away Teoscar. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, the Giants had kind of a Giants offseason after almost getting Judge and Correa. Mitch Hanniger, Michael Conforto. We're going to see him play baseball again, huh? Yeah, I keep forgetting. It's like, oh, we, we haven't seen this dude. It's a long off season, man. Uh, and meanwhile, you had teams. You know, it's going to be interesting to see the wiggle teams. And when I say the wiggle teams, your Texas Rangers, what are they now? Because, man, they added a rotation. They got some young guys, Simeon and Seager. Guy Josh Young gets a chance this year. Let's see what they are. What are the Giants? The Giants brought in a bunch of MLB guys, Stripling and Manaya. Do they have the sauce to tap into them? The Boston Red Sox have been on my radar a lot more recently. Um, man, watching Yoshida, it's funny when you watch a guy a little bit, how much it can change your opinion. And I'm biased because he's a short king. Their lineup's going to do stuff. I wonder if they can pitch enough. Their bullpen is there. Their starters have to give them five innings and they'll have a chance. Um but the Red Sox offense has a chance to be kind of tough this year. There's one team that I've been circling back to the past, um, I think like 24 hours. 
as a team that I don't think I don't think we're talking about enough as like a powerhouse team in Major League Baseball. And I just hiccup twice, and I'm sorry about that. I think it's the coffee just fighting back. Not sure. Um, I'm all in on the St. Louis Cardinals. Um, Brandon Donovan, we've talked about him a couple times. Four war last year, not even a full campaign, can play anywhere, won the utility gold glove, um, also had really good hitting stats. He's a body for them. Lars Newtbar, you may remember him leading off for Team Japan. Uh, he's on that team. Paul Goldschmidt won the MVP last year. Bong. Nolan Arenado, we think, was third in the MVP last year. Bong. They signed Wilson Contreras. Behind the dish, over from the Cubbies. Rivalry game. Tyler O'Neill had one massive year. He's on, he's on this roster if he can bounce back. I mean, we'll get to that in a second. Nolan Gorman, former top prospect for this team, now kind of like a bonus piece, might be their DH. Uh, he's projected to hit 21 homers this year, casually. Um, Jordan Walker, super prospect. Number four, number four in baseball. I guess it depends where you look. Uh, 20 years old, makes the team out of camp. He's going to be playing some corner outfield and DHing. Tommy Edmond is now listed in their nine slot. He was a little bit of their leadoff guy last year. He could casually have a six-war season between offense and defense. He's won pedals. JM, all JM team. Uh, I went past Tyler O'Neill quick. I didn't mention Dylan Carlson yet. Um, he's technically on their bench. He's 24 now. He's a guy that's had... I've seen him bat in the middle of their lineup at times. There, and we just did our Talking Baseball position units draft. And I think their infield and outfield feel funky for some reason because you don't necessarily know who's going to be where. But all their problems are good. Everyone plays good defense. Everyone hits a little bit. Um, their bullpen... Helsley, Gallegos, Palante, and Hicks. You got four guys you like right there. Um, that, man, every time I feel like I've brought up this org recently, Genesis Cabrera, I think he's going to start in the minors for there. I, I feel like the light bulb's going to go off for him fully at some point. Mason wins a big shortstop prospect for him. I, I wonder if he's on the path for them in two years or if he becomes a trade piece. The question kind of becomes their starting pitching, who Miles Michaelis, we probably don't respect as much as we should respect Miles Michaelis. Jack Flaherty has been hurt. Um, if he can stay on the field, we believe in Jack Flaherty. He's 27. I mean, come on. Um, Jordan Montgomery, how about that? Harrison Bader trade that was famously in talking Yanks land. Um, you know, look at Monty's career stats. Pretty good. As solid as you'll find. Pretty good. Um, and I think St. Louis is going to fit him well. I know he got off to a hot start and a cold finish, but I, I think he might be in a good place there. And then between, remember when Steven Matz was good and he got a contract? He's had some health issues and good issues, but... I've seen him click. I think he's an every other year guy on his baseball reference. And they've got some other young pitchers between uh, a Jordan Woodford, a you know Dakota Hudson, Matthew Liberatore is a, 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 the prospect they got back for Randy Rosarena, I believe. So mm. uh, they'll want to get something out of him. Uh, he might get a shot after what what uh, what Randy's done. They are the only team around the league that recently I've been doing, uh, we might be underrating them. Um, that I think when you talk about the top teams in baseball, I don't think you jump to the St. Louis Cardinals. They won 93 games last year. Um, you know, I, I think they got hurt by a little bit last year. Everyone wanted it to be their magic season because uh, it was Pujols, Yachty, and potentially Wayno's last year. Wayno's back. Uh, Team USA, Wayno. I didn't mention him in the rotation. Uh, strained groin representing America. Been there. Um, 
calling up the top prospect, Jordan Walker, and just who this organization is. Um, they've got a couple prospects, Herrera and Graceffo, that are lined up for the major leagues this year. I don't know. I, I think this organization just has it figured out. I think the division, the Brewers, uh, I think are number two, but I think they're on a different level of number two. The Cubs should be better this year. What does it look like? Um, Cubs fans will tell you that their pitching has it more figured out than it looks like on paper. Very interested to see Cubs fans. Um, I don't know. I, I think the Reds will have moments where players are highlighted. I think the Pirates can be a little better. I, I like what they're doing down there. But I think the Cardinals have the best chance... Maybe the cleanest chance to win their division. Think about it. Uh, Dodgers, Padres, you know, if, if there's ever a Padres year, it's now, right? Um, the Dodgers had kind of a quieter offseason than you thought. Uh, the Padres had a louder offseason than you thought. Um, that those teams should be at each other's throats. The NL East, Braves and Mets literally both won 101 last year, and that's ignoring the Phillies who went to the World Series. I kind of like how this season sets up for the Cardinals. The biggest thing that is scaring me, the last time we gave a speech about this team, a team like this, it was last year's White Sox. It was they have the path. They're the most talented team by far. Um, and their wheels fell off. But I think what the Cardinals have organizationally, um, I am buying myself some St. Louis Cardinals stock. Um, I, I think I think with any other National League team, Braves, Mets, Dodgers, Padres, they deserve to be mentioned with them and potentially, I think potentially better with them. I, I think some of, some of their name recognition doesn't jump off the page like you'd like to, but Paul Goldschmidt, if he was a lifetime Yankee, we would talk him about him higher than Mattingly. Like, easily. <laughs> like, easily, easily. Um, Nolan Arenado? I mean, my God. My God. It, like, has a chance to go down as, like, the best to ever do it at third base. So, um, with all of their young bodies that are good, have clicked, have a chance to click more, um, I am on a big St. Louis Cardinals quick kick in the National League. In the American League... Can someone beat Houston? I don't even know if I'm asking my Yankees anymore. I, I, think, I think I'm asking the Mariners, but also like there's such a big brother factor there that I don't know. I, I think the Mariners have the talent to do it. I think there's some mental hurdles with that team in Houston that I don't know. I just don't. When there's a team that there's literally no way they miss the playoffs, like, no way. There's no way. There's no way the Houston Astros miss the playoffs this year and that they're going to be in the playoffs and Bregman will be there and Payne will be there and Altuve will be there and Tucker will be there and Jordan Alvarez. How come we don't talk about him more? I'm going to bring up his stats real quick. Just one last reminder. Just check it out. Just one last reminder. Um, these are Jordan Alvarez's stats over 135 games last year. He had a 306 batting average, a 406 on base, and a 1.019 OPS. Um, he missed, uh, I think he had one injury stint. He played 135 games. Um, I wouldn't be surprised. His walk number went up. From the year before, his strikeout number went down from the year before. Uh, I He hit the World Series winning home run. And I think, you know, between being blinded by Soto and being blinded by the other stars on that Houston team, uh, Jordan Alvarez, I do not be shocked if he is your AL MVP winner. Do not be shocked if Houston is back. Um... I do think, uh, will they miss Verlander? 
I don't know. They have the pitching. Framber, Javier, Urquidy, Luis Garcia, Hunter Brown. I will say, with one hiccup or injury, that pitching staff could look not as pretty as it has in past years. Um, that being said, they're going to figure it out, and you know that. And I feel like this team has been poised to make the big move for a while, and they haven't done it. Like, you know, there were some talks, will they re-sign Correa? It never happened. What other free agents would they be in? Be in on. They did sign Jose Abreu. Not sure if I mentioned him when we talk about the lineup. That's a guy who's just constantly nails. Constantly. Replacing Yuli Gurriel, who had a bad year last year. Houston's going to be back. American League teams that can take them down. I hope it's the Mariners. We'll see if my Yankees have anything for them. I don't think any of the Central teams do. And is this the year the Blue Jays click? That's the other one that you got to have circled. As a Yankee fan, I'm a little scared of. Um, Bo Bichette has more in the tank. Vlad Guerrero Jr. has more in the tank. They made the Varsho trade. They addressed some of their defensive stuff. They, they got rid of their manager last year. Uh, their pitching staff, Bassett, added to that. Um, will this be the year Toronto joins the party? Uh, I think we're going to find out during the regular season. I, I think the regular season, we talked about Philly last year. They made the playoffs. They have the high-end star power. The regular season matters for Toronto. Like, show up. Be a problem. The Yankees should hate playing you. The Yankees should hate playing the Blue Jays. They are so talented. Um, that I wonder if it's the year that it clicks for them. And then the most talked about topic this season will be Shohei Otani and the Angels. Um, will they get off to a warm start? Will they get off to a good start? What does Otani's season start to look like? Will there be any chance he's traded? My goodness. Hey, we would have laughed when we said Soto would get traded, right? That happened. You know what I've, all, I've been coming back to? and I, I'm glad I didn't tweet it because I think it's too late to happen, but all the Brian Reynolds extension stuff, the last thing that was like that was Juan Soto. Just all the public like, I want an extension, I want an extension, and they're talking. <clears throat> The Pirates' biggest contract ever is Key Bryant, right? I believe so. <clears throat> Which was like seven for 80. Yeah, it's a, it was a pre-arb extension, so. Brian Reynolds doesn't want that kind of money. That uh, I think the bottom's going to, I thought the bottom might fall out of that this preseason, but I, I think if you're the Pirates, if you don't have the deal you want, you have a little bit of momentum going into this season that I don't think you'd want to, shoot it in the foot instantly. Let Brian Reynolds help the other young guys around them, see where you're at, and then if then if you have to do it, you do it. Um, and you could get a lot of pieces. Uh, but Shohei Otani, God, those goddamn angels. I hope they get me to a point this season where I <laughs> do not have to quit them, but BBD, then I open up their baseball, their fan graph step chart, Geo's listed as their starting shortstop. <laughs> How'd that happen? David Fletcher is around. I think Renhifo can play there. They're giving Ohapi the start behind the dish. That's exciting. Nikki Cass is Logan Ohapi. Good. That lineup looks so good. Ah, not a lot of lefties. Jake Lamb made the, made the Angels? This is how I find out? I always wondered what happened to him. Shohei Sandoval, Tyler Anderson, who got his Dodgers camp. Reed Detmers, the young pitcher, Jose Suarez. God, I hope you Halos can hang around. Because, oh my God, if they have to trade Otani. That's like the end of the franchise. 
you have you have the coolest, most unique, best baseball player <laughs> ever. With the best baseball player from the last decade, and I know it's a team sport, but if you can't put it together around that, then your franchise is done. It's over. That I don't know. Angel fans, I guess I'm rooting for you, but if you give me a chance to turn and get the Otani trade stuff going and you're under 500, oh, I am hammering that button. Because, God, that would be a fun topic. And that would be a fun storyline for this baseball season as he heads still free agency. Uh, and I think the last thing I'll say about this baseball season, I, you know, we're, I think we're about to do our talking baseball uh, prop bet episode, which is fun. And I, you know, uh, a lot of my takes wouldn't be too electric. I told you I'd, I'd buy a little Vladdy MVP stock. I'd buy a little uh, Jordan MVP stock. That's, you know, something would basically have to happen to Otani. Um, or be traded to the National League, which would be pretty wild. Um, don't see that happening necessarily. Although, looping it all together, every team, every good team has their fake Otani kind of rumors around them. St. Louis and Seattle are two of those teams. Me and Trev mentioned them in their TPPs. Mm. The Angels. You're a weird franchise, right? If you do trade Shohei Otani, the Angels would want Major League talent because they're the Angels and Mike Trout is still there. A lot of those guys I mentioned on St. Louis, if you could package a Dylan Carlson or Tyler O'Neill or Brendan Donovan, Nolan Gorman, Mason Wynn, they've got Young major league guys that I don't know. I know Jim's on a Dodgers want. Everyone wants Otani. Let's reset there. But what is the price tag and what do the Angels want? I don't know. I I, I think St. Louis, if there's a mix to get into, I think they genuinely might get into the mix. It's a team that they loves were, a superstar. They were a team rumored around Soto last year, probably more than any other team. Obviously, it didn't happen. But not at the very end. They They're a team the that rumored, loves but. a superstar. They they've had them. Uh, Big Mac, Mark McGuire. Um, you know, even Arenado and Goldschmidt. And I think Goldie's money comes off the book soon. That like, you mm -hmm. can make the Otani money make sense in St. Louis. That you know that whole Correa in Minnesota. If they could court him, um, I don't know. I, I'm excited to see what this season provides. They've, I mean, they've got, like you said, that mix of, of young talent with a lot of years of control left that are in MLB right now, plus Wynn <laughs> is within a year away. And you could revamp. You could The, uh, the I, Angels could think they're revamping their whole team for a player they're getting rid of for half a season. So let's see where we get. Uh, the other thing that I'm really excited for, it happens every MLB season. It was kind of the Orioles last year. It was... Um, you know, there's always a team that, that surprises you. I wonder who it's going to be. Um, I've been daydreaming about the Kansas City Royals recently. Um, I'm too close to the situation. Vinny Pasquantino, I think he's good. MJ Melendez is an MLB The Show killer, and I think he's good. Brady Singer broke out last year. Um, I wonder what team... Do we not expect to be invited to the party at all? Will invite themselves to the party. Can my snakes get some good juice going? The Marlins. You know, at least they've got a plan, right? They brought in a bunch of contact guys, and they can pitch. Let's see how it works. Um, Pittsburgh, can they get any juice going? Or is it more obvious than we think? Is it a San Francisco Giants? Is it a Boston Red Sox? Is it a Chicago Cubs? I don't know, but I'm so excited to go through this season with you guys. Um, Wake and Jake, we're going to have some big episodes. Talking baseball, we're going to have some big episodes. Um, and, man, it's going to be fun to ride it out with you guys. So uh, let's uh, buckle up.
Because it's here. It's here. So, all of that is brought to you by the DraftKings Sportsbook. Baseball fans, America's pastime is back. Step up to the plate for some season opener action with the DraftKings Sportsbook. One of America's top-rated sportsbook apps. Right now, new customers can place a $5 pregame money line bet and get $150 in bonus bets if their team wins. Talk about hitting it out of the park. Nice. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use sign up with code BAKERS. Yes. New customers can bet just $5 on any pregame money line and get $150 in bonus bets if their team wins. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code BAKERS. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. I did place something that John put in front of me, uh, and we did a Talking Yanks prop bet episode. If you guys, if you guys want to do DraftKings right, look at their like deals. They had a opt-in um, MLB season boost. It was plus 300. I bet the Garrett Cole to lead the AL in strikeouts. There's not a lot of guys that can compete with him, man. Um, that if he pitches every game, like, you're going to win. And I think with the boost, it's up to, like, 800. Um, so, there's that. Uh, let's see. We're going to do some Q&A. We did these uh, a few Eps ago, so let's see what is going on. We go live on AMP. Let's see what is going on in the chat. Bryce Brashear says, I think Evaldi is really slept on. He's looking great. Fenway will ruin your stats. Um, and I know we've come a long way statistically that we don't measure everything on ERA. What Evaldi's done the past three years in Boston... Uh, 61 starts, a 3.79 ERA. More strikeouts than innings pitched. He led the league in FIP in 2021. I mean, that's, that's big boy stuff. That's the elite of the elite. Um, last year, he definitely took a step back. Um, he got hurt. If Texas stays healthy, they're going to win a lot of games. But... I don't think anyone truly believes in DeGrom staying healthy. Um, let's see what Evaldi's got. And then it's, it's these guys in a new... It, what is, are you getting Dodgers Andrew Heaney or Yankees Andrew Heaney? Or somewhere in between. Um, and their lineup, but you, you kind of wish there was one more guy, but you, can, you could say that for anything. But yeah, we're, we're big Evaldi fans. If he ended up on the Yankees, we would have been stoked. We would have been stoked. Um, Trout over 125 games played this season I'll go over I, I know he's been banged up in recent years um, And let's be honest Before the season To, to say I think it's going to be the under on Trout If you're super I, I've turned the page And we talked about it with Foolish Baseball That I thought it was interesting that Foolish was Holding injury history less against guys Because he thinks it's kind of a variable you can't control for some guys, I mean, Buxton, I'm sorry. I, I hate that he's the poster boy for it, but look at his baseball reference. I, I mean, it's, it's, I'm not excited about it. I'm sad. It's just, it's a trend. It's a trend. Who's um, James Paxton? Yeah. Like, again, I, it, it feels like you end up in a rude territory, but, you know, literally, I think, I think it was the day after the Boston... <laughs> Uh, team profile and projection came out and they were in the comments and they weren't happy. They were like, yo, Paxton looks great this spring, blah, blah, blah. James Paxton's going to be hurt this year. Um, you know, how about this? If Red Sox fans are getting mad, like Luis Severino, if you had to place a bet no. before the season on him getting hurt at some point, the safe you, bet was if yes. Could, if it was yes or no, will Luis Severino miss a month at some point? And you would have gotten bad odds. Yeah. You know? So, Stanton, if they want to do, they keep. He do, will have an IL stint this Carlos year. Carlos Stanton, I would, unfortunately will be hurt at some point this year. I, I got it. I'd love to be wrong. I'll knock on wood, or I guess I don't want. I don't know. Um, but it, it's just when you have that much history, it is kind of a pivot year for Trout. Um, because remember, Bryce Harper used to be quote unquote injury prone as a young ball player. He's played a lot. I know he's banged up now. Um, 
I think for Trout, it's been a little overblown. Uh, the 2020 season, he played 53 out of the 60 games. Um, 2021, I mean, only 36 games. And now, and last year, 119. Um, but, you know, one four, 134 games, which he played in 2019, that is kind of the new standard of playing a full season, right? Like, if you see someone's played 130 games, you say, you know, they, they might have had one IL stint. Yeah. But you played the whole year. Like, that's that's the new version. Like, I, whenever I see like, anyone... Like, I guess over 140 is, like, there's no discussing. Right. But what, whenever I see anyone nowadays that's, like, 155 plus, I'm like, whoa. Like, wow. You really played. Um, they, I think you'd like 134 is in the low range. I think 130 to 145 is kind of like the, the, like you were there and you missed a little bit of time. Um, I'm, I'm in on Trouty, man. And guess, you know how old Trout is? 31. 31 years old. Out of um, time. We have a little bit of Trout fatigue almost, and that's insane. He was so immediately, like, the best player in the world. Yeah. And that's been for a decade now. So. And everyone was, like, almost not excited about how good he was. Weird. Um, someone said, Jack Leiter. Hey, let's see. You know, I, a part of the reason I love St. Louis so much and I ranted and raved about them was that they have a sneaky big youth movement on that team that if Texas wants to go anywhere, Josh Young... As a Zeke Duran, a Josh Smith, a Jack Leiter, a Cole Wynn, yeah, they're going to need young guys to step up. Um, and how about this? As much as DeGrom's health and how good are Evaldi, Gray, and Heaney going to matter to their team season, whatever youth can help support this team is going to be just as important. If they want to compete with Seattle and Houston, I mean, come on. Um. Let's see. What else is in the chat? What career homer milestones will we see? Longoria is at 331. Stanton is at 378. And JD's at 282. Stanton will... So how about this to pick Stanton up? Stanton will get to 400 homers this year, which... I don't know. I, I hope that opens some eyes for Yankee fans and just people around baseball that, like, he's an all-time dude. He's an all-time dude. Um... All-time power hitter. Mm -hmm. Like, you kind of can't argue that. Um, so I'm excited to see that. That should be a nice, a fun part of the Yankee season. Um, let's see. Verlander has 3,198 career strikeouts. Scherzer's, oh my God, I forgot that they're super close. That'll be fun. Um, who will end the season passing Maddox? So they would need about 200 each. To pass Maddox. Um, a l or even a little less. I'll go Scherzer does it. I'll say Verlander doesn't. Um, I think Verlander's going to rely on the strikeout less as he gets older. He just likes attacking hitters and getting them out. Um, and he'll probably, he will have a stint where he's not pitching. Um, you could probably say the same for Scherzer, but I think Scherzer still takes an odd amount of pride of punching tickets. Um that I think he'll get there. Uh, but probably both. How about that? Um, let's see. Circling back on some angel stuff we were doing on Geo's, their shortstop. You ever look at, like, the team, like, depth chart page? Not roster resource, but if you go to, like, the team tab drop on, down. On roster resource? It's on Fangrass. It's Fangrass, technically, sorry. like, not in the roster resource okay. section. I do not, but I'm interested in looking at it. The, Where is it? If you, teams? So yeah, that teams drop down. Okay. And if you go to, we're talking about the Angels, so you go click on the Angels, okay. not the part that says DC. Okay. And you scroll down, they show the diamond. It has, like, yes. projected amount of playing time at each spot. Yes. Just, I was thinking about Geo being like, is that, is that really the plan there? And it, that kind of is, but it's, like, 40% of games he's going to be the shortstop. And like a day a week everywhere else. Yeah, I guess very they're, weird. They're leaving themselves a little bit of wiggle, but yeah, it's, yeah. Um, I haven't monitored this during a year before, but it's one of those. 
I don't know. I you know could Geo be your shortstop for two months and you'd be fine? I think so. Um, and if they're in a position to go from there, maybe they can bring someone in. But yeah, that's what same Peraza? thing we were saying about uh same thing we were saying about Geo when he was supposed to be in the Yankees shortstop last spring. Like, Otani for Peraza. If he's the if he's your second best option there, that that's fine. You can have him play there for a week and you won't be mad. But mm. shouldn't be the plan. Out of all the young players making opening day rosters this year, if you could wave your magic wand, which player would you steal and place on the Yankees? That gets a little tricky because, um, you know, where's the, where do you draw the line? Like, can I take like Michael Harris too? Is he a young player? How about a shout out as I wear my hat today, and I think it's John Boy Media's official D backs day. I think the day before the season is officially D backs day at John Boy Media. A guy like Corbin Carroll, you know, I I know we, you and I probably, well, I've watched a little bit, but you might not have seen a ton of Corbin Carroll, but I think if you did, you'd be blown away. <laughs> I think he's got kind of pops, elite speed. He's got a good stick. I think he's got strong defense. Like Yankees could use a lefty left fielder. I got yelled at by the D-backs for not having Corbin Carroll on my top 10 list. Got yelled at by a lot of people on those lists. Um, let's see what else we have. Um, WBC question: How many MLB teams would Japan be favored against in a seven-game series? I think a lot. Like an ML MLB team. I mean, Otani, Darvish, Roki Sasaki. Yeah. That'd be the best three in baseball, we think. I think so. Probably. Yes. Yes, they would. So they Darvish is best, which she still is. They'd have the top three pitchers in baseball. I mean, does Japan get to tap into more Team Japan? I guess Tanaka? Mm, yeah, is it actually their best possible team? Because I think Tanaka still makes that staff. You know, the, the third baseman, Murakami, if I'm mm-hmm. getting that wrong. I mean, he's supposed to be. I think he'd get a... 100 mil from MLB teams right now if he was a free agent. Supposed to. In the first baseman years. was supposed to be almost, I don't want to say Goldschmidt-esque, but he's supposed to be this just all-around stud. Um, best defensive shortstop ever, Japan says about their shortstop. Played with a broken pinky on his throwing hand. Uh, I guess Newpar's off my Cardinals, so they're broken. Um, yeah, man, that Team Japan was really goddamn good. Really good. Um Will the Tigers be trading away all their pitching this season? Manning, Scooble, Turnbull, uh, pitching always at a premium at the deadline. I hope there's anything in Tigers land this year. Last year was the saddest baseball reference you could possibly Ugh. click on. I mean, yeah, it was bad, bad. Uh, that I hope there's something there. I know Manning and Scooble were supposed to really be a part of their future. Turnbull... It's a little bit of MLB the show brain, but I think he's got good stuff. And I think he would be the guy that if it's clicking early this year, I think you cash in that ticket. Um, but the Tigers, it'll be, man. It'll be a year and a half guy at the deadline. How far have we come from, you know, they were kind of an upstart team and they added Baez and Erod. Like, the Tigers could use any good juice. Um, it just sucks that they're too... Like most exciting arms hurt. They were if yeah. they were around and and effective, it would change a lot. Did y'all know Luis Castillo and Noah Syndergaard are the same age? I guess I would have guessed Syndergaard was older. Yeah, just been just because he's in the spotlight more. Got to be in New York early, so. But okay. All right. Nice question. Uh, this one is for BBD. Would you rather be a pirate or a ninja? Mm. I've already gone back and forth a couple times. I feel like ninjas are just better pure athletes, mm. and I'd I'd like that in my game a little bit. Okay. Okay. And then, yeah, I guess that's most of the questions we've got. I, I see, uh... Normal dog saying Red Sox, Giants, Cubs re- wouldn't really be a shocker like the Orioles. Yes, um, 
But I think potentially those teams, if things click and they add at the deadline, they could do more. Um, but I don't know. I, I just want to know, like, what, if I told, how about this? If there were DraftKings odds and it was, will the, will the Red Sox, Giants, or Cubs be a playoff team and you got all three of those, I think the odds would be negative. Like, I think it'd be negative 150 or something that one of those teams makes the playoffs. Three wild card slots? I don't know. Something has to break for one of those teams, but I, that's kind of baseball, right? Um, I will genuinely cry if Shohei's traded to the Cardinals. All right. Jason Shreve projected to make the Tigers. Oh, my guy. Outs. Lefty outs. Be a lefty reliever, kids. Um, I think that's kind of all I've got, guys. Excited to get into the season. Um, Man, it's going to be a fun one. Just a reminder to go to DraftKings. Uh, code Bakers, if you're downloading the Sportsbook app. Um, $5 on any pregame money line. Get $150 in bonus bets if their team wins. Only a DraftKings Sportsbook code Bakers. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Make sure you're subbed up and all that fun stuff. And uh, we will see you Monday after opening weekend of baseball and on the precipice of the UConn Huskies winning the national championship. Wow. Goodbye.